the Dorchester, one of London's most famous five-star hotels. After the lacklustre preparation for the forthcoming Combined Services cooking competition... That is the worst dish I've seen today. Major Harry Lomas has arranged a culinary masterclass for some of his chefs. I keep challenging them. Sometimes they say that I'm challenging them too much, but I see that every day being a learning day. Harry is keen for the inexperienced private Kirk Davis to enter the competition. It's uh, one for your CV, and I, you know, I never thought in a million years that I'd be working in Dorchester. <laughs> to get him up to speed, he's having a knife skills workshop from executive chef Henry Brossi, a renowned perfectionist. Just delivering to expectations, it's, it's, not, it's not good enough in our business, you have to do all this more. Henry gets the guys to work learning the classic French vegetable cuts, julienne, brunoise and massa d'oeil. These three different cuts I would like to see from you. As the more experienced chefs crack on, Henry gives left-handed Kirk some extra tuition. Lock them off a little bit, so they stand, so you, you don't walk it, right? And then you also cut in an angle away from you. Can you give it a try? During training, Gloucester lad Kirk Davis wasn't renowned for his steady hand. It's going to take a few years, I think, to uh, come a good fetch car by the looks of this. And during a visit to 15, the restaurant founded by Jamie Oliver, Shaky Davis nearly cut his hand off. You cut yourself twice? Yes. <laughs> I'm not the best person with knives, but it's all about learning, so eventually one day I might be able to uh, prep a meal without cutting fingers off. Excellent for the first attempt, you know? Perfect, see? Next, the chefs move on to the butchery. That's it. And then feel the bone in the middle and then you just go left and right. Roll it, roll it up, that's it. Kirk has impressed the boss with his filleting of chicken breasts. Good skills, boys. Well done. Brilliant. Good. Set for the second attempt, spot on. And very good. Now our next action will be then the cooking side. But how will Kirk and the boys fare cooking their dishes unsupervised? Okay, all that I want from you is chicken sauté with uh, pea and broad bean risotto. Former fast food chef Private Davis is not exactly a risotto expert. Not very confident. I haven't got a clue what I'm doing. You know, I've got to make risotto. Never heard of risotto. No, make it. So, see how it goes, eh? Ah, uh, bread and garlic. Warrant officer Roger Marshall is on hand to make sure Kirk benefits from being thrown in at the deep end. As soon as something's not going right or you put a bit of pressure on them, they start working in a bit of a mess. So I've told them to start calm down, get rid of your rubbish, get organised and, and crack on. But with nerves getting the better of him, Kirk burns his rice. Right, what we've got here? More rice? Yeah, burn it. What are you? How did you burn it? I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Six months ago, this guy was working in a service station and he's gone from that to being in the Dorchester producing a meal for the bloody executive chef of the Dorchester. So I think anyone would be flapping. What you got to do, risotto, a bit of veg and cut your chicken. How hard's that? Calm down and take your time. Stop checking. The chefs race to be ready on time and Kirk starts to get back on track. He's going to try and get some good colour on this and probably whack it in the oven for 10 minutes and hopefully it should be uh, done. It's the moment of truth. First up, Lance Sergeant Tremaine with 12 years army chef experience. Here we are. He's serving sautéed chicken with broad bean and pea risotto with a bunch of tomatoes. I think there's slightly too much veg in there. A couple of mistakes, lack of sauce, portion size, and then also uh, your higher amount of the vegetables. But so the better tent, well then, good, thank you. Next, Lance Sergeant Phil Goble, with 13 years of army cooking to his name. Chicken is very nice. Yeah, it's good. The risotto is not bad, I must say. Lacks a bit in seasoning. Okay? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, good thank effort. You. The senior chefs have run the gauntlet. Now it's Private Davis, six months' experience as an army chef. Right, my 
the sun. Huh? I'm glad it's over, huh? The sun's just beginning. It's the worst. I, uh, I went in on to say, yeah. Have you tried the dish? Have you tasted it? Have you tasted your risotto? Uh, yes. You did? But that one is not seasoned at all. That doesn't taste nothing. The actual proportion of your veg to rice isn't too bad. We've had ones where there's more veg than rice. The combination with the vegetable is quite good. Even the presentation doesn't look that great, but how the flavors are coming together, uh, it's, it's quite nice. You made an effort with the sauce, it's quite nice to see actually that you've been thinking a little bit further than, uh, than your colleagues. Appreciate the comments, Chef. I can take them away and I can improve on what I've done. I was hitting it. The sliding door opens, step in the door shuts down, yeah. You know, it's, it's quite scary. He's a completely different person. He's confident, he's bubbling, he's going, I want to do the competition now. So I am justifiably very proud of him. Right, guys, well done. Mark is out over at Wellington Barracks, Private Katrina Davis is having a second attempt at her tandoori chicken roulade. No, there hasn't been any changes yet since last time you see me cooking. It is quite difficult to get it right, for me anyway. This time, she's hoping to convince Major Lomas that it's good enough to enter into the competition's ethnic category. OK, first of all, we're late. Yeah. OK, come forward, don't be scared. What is that sauce? It's um, a tomato-based sauce, sir. With... I don't like it. That, at this stage of the game, is completely unacceptable. All right? I mean, what's ethnic about it? It's got the pinal rice, which is ethnic. Right, is that make it ethnic? Rice? The chicken and the sauce. Chicken. But there's not, it, it's not ethnic enough. The reason I'm coming down hard here, all right? We need to just wake up and smell the coffee, all right? We'll go back to you the two need to go back to the drawing board. I'm not very happy now. I don't, I feel a bit like rubbish. I just lost control of everything of what I was doing, so. I just, I don't know, it's not good. I'd rather not put anybody in rather than to either overface them or to be made a laughing stock. Well, we've got two weeks and there's gonna have to be a bit of burning the midnight oil to get it sorted out. To reconnect Katrina with the fundamentals of Indian cuisine, Major Lomas has sent her to one of London's finest restaurants, the Cinnamon Club. Popular with politicians and celebrities, the kitchen is run by head chef Harry Nagaraj. 43 main course away. Katrina, one chicken for the main course pass, please. It brings back a lot of memories, the smells, the tastes, and even like them, not like they're speaking in their own language as well, and they've got the Indian music and that, and it makes me feel right at home. Yeah, it's nice to get back in touch with my roots. Katrina's learning a new dish. Old Delhi-style chicken is an Indian classic dish where the chicken is marinated in a blend of tandoori spices before being cooked in a tandoor oven. Very simple. You're going to have your chicken. It's served with a spicy tomato and butter macni sauce. And then if you want to spoon a bit, Katrina hopes the dish will be her ticket to competition glory. I am competitive, actually. Uh, I don't like to be beaten. <laughs> now the chefs have their recipes, Major Harry Lomas runs them ragged from dawn till dusk. Two ICs here. We want to see the dish half an hour ago. <laughs> okay, I don't need excuses. Yeah. Okay, so are you happy with it? No, the sauce is still okay. Plate's dirty. At the end of the day, I want the best for them, but if you don't push them to try and tease the best out of them, then you're never going to see what their potential is. If you ever produce that to me again, you will be wearing it. You shouldn't be like, mist, just sort it all out, rather than a elephant. You need to practice this dish every day. So this could be the breaking of me. I might have to give up. Defence Food Services School of Army Catering, Aldershot. Today, Harry's chefs will compete with army chefs from all over the country in a series of timed cook-offs for various types of cuisine. 
That's 15 minutes gone, chefs. 15 minutes left. They are battling for the honour of representing Team Army at the Forces Cooking Competition. Only a select few will get through. It's about all the districts and all the brigades coming together to really put the best team in to take on and whip the arse off the, uh, the senior service, the Royal Navy, and um, the other service, what is it? Um, oh, the Royal Air Force. Everything's dependent on today now, the last final kickoff. And obviously I've done this so many times, and now it's my last chance to actually prove that I can do it to get through. OK, heat two, open ethnic, two portions to your choice in the next 30 minutes. In your own time, carry on. Today, Katrina has just 30 minutes to prepare her ethnic dish, old Delhi-style chicken, under strict test conditions. The open ethnic class is open to any rank. For Private Katrina Davis, just a year out of army catering school, it's a tough contest. There's ten people cooking in two slots for open ethnic, so I've really got to get this right. This isn't curry in a hurry, but fine Indian cuisine. I'm just really shaking my mind. I don't think it affects me as much as it is, but it is. And the proof is in the eating. Overall, it's quite a nice dish. But it's got a nice strong chilli flavour coming through in the sauce there. And then she's complemented it with a nice minty creamy yoghurt, which will clear the palate after. Presentation's not, not the best I've seen today. We'll find out in a while whether she's gone through or not. The army judges confer to see who will represent Team Army in the open ethnic class. Maybe three. We need to choose two. For Katrina, it's time to find out if the hours of practice have been worthwhile. Right, guys, open ethnic, again, another hard dish. Ten people, two places. Eight of you are going to be disappointed. OK, I'm not going to keep you any longer. Two that are going through are... Private Grunt, Private Davis. So, those of you who have got through, well done. It doesn't mean that the work's finished. The work's only just going to start for you. Katrina's Cinnamon Club dish has won her a place at the Forces Cook-Off in three days' time. I was just, oh my God, I was really shocked and really surprised and just, well, happy. Out of ten people, I got three, so that's pretty good. <laughs> Can't believe it. <laughs> With Katrina Davis through to Team Army, it's down to the other Davis, Kirk, to bring up the rear. I think I'm more nervous about my trolley falling apart. <laughs> Now, the uh, dish for Private Davis, the category that he's in, sort of matches his skill set, and therefore I think that he'll be able to make it. Winning a place in this elite cooking corps would be a major achievement for Shaky Davis. That was me before I started. <laughs> oh, 16 stone there when I first started. I think I'm down to about 14 stone now, so fit and healthy. Since he joined the army just over a year ago, he's got fit and battled dyslexia. When I was at school, I had a learning support helper uh, for when I'd done my tests and sat exams like that. So I did get bullied quite a bit at school, but I just took it as a knock on the chin and got on with life. Now he's trying to forge a career he can be proud of. I really want it, you know. I want it. I want to go in there with a clear head and I want to win my dish. Kirk Davis will need to overcome his nerves under pressure to cook his chicken dish unaided in just 30 minutes under the scrutiny of army judges. In the novice chicken class, Kirk will be marked on his knife skills, work practice and time planning. He's developed his recipe from the Dorchester by filling his chicken breasts with a posh stuffing, or farce as it's known. It's a culinary operation requiring a delicate touch. The chicken, fondant potatoes, 
vegetables, and red wine jus must be cooked to perfection and presented on the plate. Not a moment too soon, not a moment too late. The heat is on and Kirk's shaking reaches fever pitch. Now the judges put Kirk's cooking to the test to see if he's made the grade. Reduction not quite there. Mm -hmm. The um, reduction didn't go as well as it should have, so sort of uh, made a puddle on the plate. When I went in the room, I don't know what went wrong, it sort of uh, didn't produce the dish that I've been practicing, it sort of went wrong. It's one of those things that happen, I suppose, and um, I've just got to take a little pinch of salt that if I don't get through, it was just I just didn't have the best run through. Warrant officer Andy Andrews gets a debrief from the judge. Right, I've just had the word up there. You know yourself, your dish was not worthy of, of any sort of award in a competition. You had, your sauce wasn't right, your potatoes, your turnings not very good. There's a lot more work to be doing, doing on it, okay? Luckily, you've got the opportunity to do more work on it because you've gone through it the next round, all right? <laughs> nah, <laughs> my dish is shit, sir. Okay, hey, the flavors were there, the elements were there, you, you, you're in. Okay. Right. Are you feeling good? You are Mr. Maltesers now. Hey. Hi, hi. Oh, man. I don't know what to say. Maybe a bit more <laughs> positive attitude might, 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 might get me somewhere in life. Yeah, yeah. not yeah. like, oh, what did I get in? Oh, God. Dude. <laughs> yeah? So. I've never been so lost for words in my life, actually. It was, uh, it was a, uh, the best feeling I think I've ever had. And I think that's uh, one step closer for me to be getting the confidence that I need for next week when I do my dish down at Sandown, that I'm going to go out there and produce the best dish with a lot of confidence, and that's what I need.